with disturbing news concerning a member of the Knicks. Cleanthony Early is recovering tonight after being shot in the right knee during a robbery outside of a strip club in Queens early Wednesday morning. Cops say the backup forward was targeted by six suspects as he left the club at about 4.15 a.m. I've been over that bridge a couple of times, but I never really thought about or I wasn't really going to this place again, so there was never really a certain type of connection to it. But coming over the bridge again, knowing that that's where I was going and seeing the directions, it was just funny because it kind of just put like this unsettling feeling in my stomach a little bit. I wouldn't say like deja vu. I would say just the uncertainty of not knowing how I might feel, you know? Not knowing the response. Like my mom's never been there, so it's kind of like in my stomach a little bit, like little butterflies, but it isn't much. I'm not like I'm like nervous to go in there or scared or something. It's just it's interesting. I'm going back. I didn't even know I was going here, so I'm sitting here like saying, oh my God. And then it brings me back to two weeks before that. And I had a dream that I told my son he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's all I remember in the dream. You ain't tell me to not go or be there. Well, then. The vision wasn't that clear. Well, the vision was, <laughs> so, you were a halfway psychic. No, I'm not a psychic. It was just I'm a joking. message. God was letting me know that something was going down. You left that way. Cityscapes, Gentlemen's Club. I mean, just I have to ask, for, just being back with your mom in, in the setting with what's going in your mind right now. I mean, it's not, it's not anything too spectacular. It's like, I only came here one time, and that was that night, you know? We were in the car, and we spoke a lot about wrong place, wrong time. So it's like, why am I going back? But coming back here is just giving me another perspective. It's taking me to a moment where I have time to reflect. From New York, the Bronx, New York. New Yorkers are some of the best people in the world. Yeah, this is the building I grew up in right here. 188 for Marion, 2466. Two ACs in the window, we live right here. A New Yorker has so many experiences and so much variety, so much culture. Yeah, we're going up to the sixth floor. Oh, that's where I used to live. Because there's all different types of people. My friend Mike used to live downstairs. That's where Muko lives. As a city kid, you're, you're kind of forced to deal with that. Dude, Rob used to live right here. It gives you an edge. Dominique used to live downstairs. Six E. This is it right here. A lot of the times at home, people are getting certain examples that are like truly crazy. Anthony, my baby. I'm blessed to say my family was very tangled in love. I mean like true, genuine, like good people. That stuff that money can't buy. I'm gonna give as long as if I have 50 cents and you say you need a quarter, I'm giving you a quarter. And I could be hungry, but I'm gonna shout eat some chips until I get home. <laughs> That's just it. My mom made tons of sacrifices. She kind of put her head down and worked as many jobs as she needed to work. She showed me how and what it was to prioritize and focus. I still am extremely attached to those morals. I had a whistle, so everybody around here knew my whistle. So when I hit the block, 
and it was like that but loud. And everybody knew that whistle and everybody started running. Oh my God, it's your mother, it's your mother, run. It was just so much fun. It's like when you're a kid or when you're young or people who go through traumatic experiences and to kind of cope, a lot of times you have to embrace and kind of approach the situation a certain type of way where you are revealing that pain and kind of addressing it so that you can conquer it. I won't be able to get over it if I don't face it. So I have to do this. You know what I mean? For myself. And I think this was a good start coming here. You know what I mean? And just seeing the place and just just knowing that this is where it started and to see how far But the crazy part is, is this ain't where it started. This ain't where it's ending. This ain't none of that. I don't I don't believe this is where it started. I don't believe this is where it's ending. I believe this is just part of the process. Being in New York, I get so many different people. Like, yo, I remember you in high school. She used to be killing, you know? So maybe it's like that in other places, but for us, if you're good, you're gonna be respected if you come back to the city. They're gonna know who you are. What up, man? Okay, you good to see you, baby. Good to see you too, man. You've been good, man. You're looking real good. Huh? Doing what I gotta do. You been out here hooping? A couple of games. I feel like four, three and one. It was nice out here early. But you don't have to be from New York. So who's the team? The Knicks, the Yankees. Those are tattoos that I have on me because that's what I thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to be a, a Yankee at a time period too. You know, I'm pretty sure I probably thought I was going to be a Ranger. But I definitely thought I was going to be a Nick for sure. What's going on? Yeah, this is where I grew up playing. Right here in Overly Park. There's people out here, there's family out here. They were big on basketball. That's all they did when I used to hang out with them and they used to watch me. They would just go to the basketball court and there was times where I wasn't big enough to play with them. So you would go play basketball on the monkey balls or something. They really introduced me to it, you know what I mean? And since they did it so much, it was something that just kind of grew on me. They were talented and everybody was like, oh, they pretty good, they pretty good. When you hear stuff like that, that make you competitive. You want to be better than, than what they might be. Around that time, my father was no older than nine. It was definitely a time where you kind of still got that blank sheet, you know what I mean? This is all you know. Y'all about to play again? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I got picked up. Everybody got their own style of playground ball. In the Bronx, you're going to get what you're going to get in the Bronx. Gritty, sometimes grimy. It's aggressive in your face. You see it. Yeah, look. Look at, look at them. <laughs> if you wasn't good, nobody was respecting you. So, just like these kids out here, you hear them screaming. Like, you just gotta come out here and hoop. That's anywhere though. If you hoop, they gonna rock with you. I don't know that I'm going to wake up every day, but if I do and when I do, I'm extremely thankful for it because I didn't have to. So it's like, I have to make choices that are going to continue to put me in a situation that's going to be better. When it comes to the things you truly care about and mean the most to you, how are you truly going to prioritize that and remove and rid yourself from being able to be distracted? And I think the people who figure it out usually find ways to just lock in. And I think that's always what I was able to do.
it was a dream come true because I remember being a kid and just thinking about that moment. I enjoyed having a chance to play for the city. I mean, it's one of one, you know, being from here. What's that like for you to just be a part of this Knicks franchise and eventually to suit up and throw that jersey on you? I just feel like it's a part of my heart and, and everything that I do it for. My mom's here, my family, the love of the game is started here, so everything just comes back to New York. I'm in New York, so I would just hang out with my friends, literally. Whatever me and my friends wanted to do, we had pretty much access to do within the city. He was performing at Cityscapes for his birthday. So I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna just go with you. But we have a party because he invited some of his boys. We bought five bottles. I'm like, all right, cool. It's my best friend's birthday. So we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to have fun. We're just cooling. I'm not even throwing any money. We stay there for about an hour. I'm like, yo, I'm about to leave. So I call the SUV. It cancels because we take a little bit too long to come outside. I'm like, all right, nah, I'm just calling Uber eggs. We leaving, we go outside. I don't want to stand outside too long, so I just hop in the car and go. I guess the two cars were like sitting on the opposite side like that, like just waiting. So when we left, they followed. Like? like coming up here. Yeah. Yeah, this is it right here. So it, it got caught on like these cameras, okay. right here. Yeah. So, so like what happened right the here? cameras. Yeah. The car stopped short. I look up, nigga. There's a fucking SUV in front of the car. So I'm like, by the time I look to the sides, there's multiple people with guns, black masks. And open the door. Give me everything you got. Now I got guns in my face. Like, there's four, five, six, as I can see, like three and three. Black mask, hoodies on, guns. Give me everything you got. So I'm taking off my chains because I got the two chains on. As I'm taking off my chains, I'm kind of inching out of the car because I feel secluded. So I'm like, I got to get out. Everybody got guns. I got to get out. But there's a dude that's in the passenger seat of the car that's like behind us. He hop out and he like, yo, give me everything you got. But they already got everything. And he has a straight at me. I'm just like, I'm looking at him. I'm a big believer in God. I remember at a young age, my grandmother had died. So I remember my mother explaining to me how my grandmother died, and I'm thinking, you know, good person, live a long life. People die from old age. Mount Zion Cemetery. It's a good thing I end up in one of those, right, after the night. And then, like, a girl in my church died from a brain aneurysm. How do you explain that to a kid that's younger than 10 years old? Like, you could randomly die. So I remember being freaked out. What is this death thing? Like, it just seems to, like, just, just come and go at any given time. You know what I mean? Like, what does it take for this not to happen to me? A couple of years after, I see my cousin get shot. So my cousin gets shot, he dies. I see the dead body on the floor. So now this is crazy to me, you know? The fact that people can do this and this is the way people are and this is how life might present itself. Why am I seeing this? Why did this just happen? You get what I'm saying? 
My brother died when I was choosing to go to college. Now I'm like feeling like this, something gotta give. You know what I mean? Like, and I didn't know how to manage the feelings of feeling that way and actually having those thoughts like besides trying to act like I don't care about it. Even with death always being around, like sometimes I also, like I remember the first time I thought like they might not have it so bad. Fuck it, you know? Like if it happens, it happens. Like, and you might consider it at an early age. Like, I don't know how long I truly want to be here. I've met two people that have committed suicides within my life. You get what I'm saying? That I have had conversations with, that I have had, that were friends that when it happened, it was like, I didn't see it coming, but I did see it coming. Certain signs show when someone is truly like lost. You get what I'm saying? Like, and there seems to be no rock or no foundations or no, no island, no nothing solid around to help them. A lot of people feel alone. I also felt alone. So I understand. The ideas those people are having aren't too different than mine's. The only difference is I'm able to come back to that love. I don't like to answer my phone sometimes because I'm afraid of what's going to be on the other end. You know, because when, my, when I lost my son, they called me. So that was like a scream that I would never forget. Finding that your, your son just drowned, that's horrible. Over the phone, and then you have to go to the morgue and look at his body. That was the worst day of my life. It was times I couldn't even talk about it. I would be crying and bawling and everything. But God has brought me a long way to, I can speak about it. At one time, I couldn't even say a word. It's like I miss my best friend. And that's why the phone, I'd be like, oh no, I'm not answering it. No one knows why he shot. They didn't shoot until I said, yo, just don't shoot. So it's funny because I was just talking about something about the uh, law of attraction and things like that and speaking things in existence. And, I mean, he had it at me and he just kind of was getting in the car when he shot. And I felt like that might have just been a reaction to what I said. I'm just like, yo, so y'all got everything? Just don't shoot. And it was like, that was the last thing that happened. As soon as I hear a gunshot, I turn and run. I remember when I had ran. Which way did you run? I had like cut this left right here. You ran here? Yeah. Okay. You turned this way, you yeah. ran here. I turned that way, boom, I made the first left, then made the first right. You said it was a basement you went under. No, it was like the cribs, it was like right here. Like, it's like, the, like these things right here, mm -hmm. you know, where the car, where the yeah. cars park. I stopped because I had felt it. I felt my leg, like, twitching. So, I kind of looked down and I like see like blood, like, you know what I mean, on my jeans, like inside of my jeans. So I kind of just pulled down my pants and I see two holes in my leg. And the first thing I think is, how am I going to explain this shit? Like, I remember that was the first thing I thought. In Queens, how the garages are in front of the cribs, it's like the cribs underneath here and then like the steps to go up. So as I'm running, I kind of walk back there, you know, just to see, because I don't know if they're following me or nothing. I like walk up the stairs to the, where the light is. I see a light on. I knock on the door. So I knock on the door. Like somebody looks at the window. So I'm like, can you help me? Can I make a phone call really fast? I like, make a phone call. My name is Clean. Like, like, I ain't say I play basketball or anything, but when I said my name, he instantly was looking. He opened the, the, the key thing. He was like, no fucking way. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing here? He opens the door and go inside. The cops pulled up five minutes like that, right after that. It's six, seven in the morning now. And then it won't 20 minutes before I'm on social media.
in the morning when I got up, my sister's friend called me. And he said, hey, Sandra, what is this I hear that Klee got shot? I said, what? And then Klee called. And he's like, Mom, I'm OK. Then he tells me, you don't have to come. I went off. I was like, what do you mean I don't have to come? He just know that I'm a crier. <laughs> he know that I was going to be crying and crying and praying. He just know me already. And I said, well, I'm coming. This is life or death. What we're dealing with is, 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 is a game. It's basketball. Uh, you know, and we, we can come back and get after it tomorrow. I think we should just take this day and just kind of get away from it and, you know, kind of count our blessings because this situation could have been much uglier. It went in and out. Went in through here, out through here. If it was here, everything could have been over with. So even in getting shot, I dodged a bullet. Even though my first question was how well would I be physically, I didn't really question like how much it might affect me mentally. It did bring an anger to me, you know? It did. It brought a protectiveness. I just felt like the more and more I was experiencing life, the more and more I, like, I just had to start guarding myself. There were some things I tried to just mask over, trying to jump back into life as if like nothing really happened. You know, I never really talked to too many people about it, even the close ones. A lot of people take that pain and just allow it to stem into more pain that they bring to everybody else. I want to take the pain, you know, and allow it to motivate me and continue to push me to do great things, because it has. But each step of the way, there's been experiences that kind of has tested me. While Clee's still in the hospital, I'm not going to really get into a debate over you know, what guys should or shouldn't be doing. I mean, guys going to go out. Guys going to have a good time. Uh, you know, I think we just have to be a little bit more aware and a little bit more conscious of kind of where we at, who we around, our surroundings. People usually see what they see and then try to come up with the conclusion of why you're that way. Not because they actually know, but based off of what their perception is. You get shot coming out of a strip club. You know what I'm saying? That just sounds terrible. You should have never been there in the first place. You know what I'm saying? It was a pretty good neighborhood. It's not that it was a bad neighborhood. It was just the people who, you know what I mean? It's like, people have this idea that it's a bad neighborhood. Look, let's, you see those people over there? See those people over there? Yeah, kids, they got families. I can't control everyone's perception of me. I will never meet everyone to be able to give them a part of who I am in the first place. There's so much that I heard about that night yeah. or by myself that is completely inaccurate. I just think it's weird. You know, I mean, it happened, so I'm dealing with it, but it's just a funny, like. Your queen Anthony, yo. What the hell? Yo, it's so nice to meet you. Yo, let me get a picture. Let's take a flick. Let's take a flick real quick. Yo, Cool Anthony Irwin. Yo. <laughs> oh, man. Are you still playing? I mean, oh, yeah, I'm still playing. I was in, I mean, I was in California for a little bit. Yeah, I did a little stint with Santa Cruz, Cruz yeah. in the D-League. So now I'm just rehabbing from that and trying to get myself back where I need to be, you know? Well, you got dropped. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this guy's going to be good. Yeah, this guy's going to be really good. So just got to keep working, you, you know? You achieve your full potential in life. And God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, man. There isn't any doubt in my mind that I will be back on the team, I'll be back on the roster. We'll see, but it's just pursuit. There was a lot of big name guys that came through. LeBron, Westbrook, Melo's always there. James Harden came through. Tim Hardaway, he's always there with me. So, I had a lot of fun. I competed, I played well. 
it'll be even better when it actually pays off, you know. But for right now, it's been real good just to see them supporting and knowing who I am and having heard of the experience. Right now, I feel good. I feel healthy. I'm just ready to continue to keep moving forward. I didn't seen a lot to know if I was supposed to go, I'm going to be gone. But I'm here and I'm here able to do certain things that are extremely positive and in a certain direction for a reason. So I take the good with the bad, the bad with the good, because you have to. So I can't complain. I just want to play basketball. I just want to be able to continue to do what I love at the highest level and compete. And I feel like the opportunity will come. I just got to stay prepared and keep staying ready for it, you know, and capitalize on it a little bit differently this time around. But I think that's what I always do, you know? It does not end there. The dream didn't end there. So for me, it's just continuing to turn that into reality.